So what makes a content camera feel more like a cinema camera? Well, that's a camera rig. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So I kind of have a love-hate relationship with camera rigs. Part of me really likes them because they're very functional and they help me get the types of shots that I wanna get. And let's be honest, they look pretty cool. But another part of me is just like, man, these things are way too bulky and it takes way too long to break down and set up. And when I'm just trying to be a run and gun type of shooter, they can really slow me down. But recently I shot a little spec ad and I shot it with my EM1 Mark II rigged out in that configuration. So I'm gonna kind of break it down and show you how I got it from looking like this to this. Okay, so let's start rigging out this EM1 Mark II. Now, as you can see, I already have the cage on. That's because I always keep the cage on this camera. This is a small rig cage and it's a half cage. And with a lot of the other rig builds that I've done in the past, I have really come to love half cages. I'm just not really fond of a big piece of metal being on the right-hand side of my camera. Yeah, I like half cages. And I also have this hand strap that just is attached to the cage and to the camera. It just makes it so it's not gonna fall out of my hands. And then on the top of the cage, I just have this little NATO rail that also has a cold shoe and that allows me to put my microphone off to the right hand side of my camera which is what I prefer and the NATO rail is pretty convenient because I can attach my handle to there which I'll get to in a second and I also have a cold shoe on the front lastly I do have a tripod plate on the bottom this tripod plate is for like the Benro S2s I keep this on there because this is compatible with all my tripods and monopods and gimbals so to get this rig started let's first put on a lens now the lenses that I was using for that spec ad mostly were actually these Sigma primes. This is the Sigma 30 millimeter. And I also use the 16 millimeter, which is on the camera that I'm using right now. I actually really like this 30 millimeter. It gives you about a 60 millimeter equivalent field of view, which is not as wide as a 50, but also not as tight as like an 85 or something like that. So it's actually a focal length that I actually kind of dig. So I use this Sigma 30 millimeter a lot. And you'll notice that both of my lenses have these step up rings, and this is gonna be for the matte box. So I've been using a couple of filters recently. The first one is the Seven Artisans Black Mist filter. This is a 1 8 strength, and Seven Artisans was nice enough to send me both of these filters, and this is their variable ND filter. Now, Seven Artisans make really cool lenses for mirrorless cameras, and they just kind of started getting into making filters, and I gotta say, I really like these filters. This Black Mist filter is basically the equivalent of like a Nissi Black Mist filter, or maybe like a Tiffin. It softens up the image a little bit and gives your highlights a little bit of a bloom, which is really nice, and this variable and D filter, I actually was really impressed with. I think this is gonna run $91 brand new, but there's barely any color shift and there's hard stops and it's super slim, which is gonna come into play here in a second. And it's all made out of metal and it's great. And it actually shows you your stops. So you can go from 1.5 stops all the way to eight stops of ND, which is pretty sweet. I really like this variable ND filter. And what's cool, and what I can do is I can still use it, but when I wanna attach my matte box, attaches just perfectly, I can tighten it down and boom. I have my matte box and a variable ND filter here that I can still kind of just reach in and adjust my variable ND. So that's super cool and if I wanted to, I could stack them so I could put the mist filter below the variable ND filter and then have mist and variable ND, which is pretty sweet. So I have my cage, my lens, my matte box. Next thing I'm gonna do is actually put my handle on. So this is my favorite handle from Small Rig. This is the Small Rig 2770. And this is super small, has like a little rubber right here, which I really like. It just looks really good on basically every camera rig that I've built out. That just attaches to the NATO rail on top. I got a top handle. I'm always a sucker for top handles, and this is just how I like to tote my camera around, but also get lower angle shots. So so I got my top handle on there. And right now this is feeling and looking really good in my opinion. Now real quick, I do wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Film Convert. So I've talked about Film Convert on my channel before, but yeah, it's a film emulation software and it does just that, emulate film stocks onto your digital video. The Film Convert plugin works on DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, and it's compatible with basically every camera that's out there. And another product that Film Convert makes is a plugin that I've been using a lot, which is called Cinematch. And basically what Cinematch does is it matches the log profile 
profiles from different cameras. So say I'm shooting on an Olympus and a Sony. If I wanted to match them both, I can just convert the footage from my Olympus OM Log 400 into something like S-Log2 and then use the same LUT, apply them to both, and that will help them match up really well. Hence the name Cinematch. If you have been wanting to purchase Film Convert Nitrate or Cinematch, which I bet you have, be sure to go down to the description below and use my code and it will give you 10% off your purchase. So I would highly recommend both those plugins. I use them every day. Go down to the description, figure out how you can get 10% off. Once again, big thanks to Film Convert for sponsoring this video. The next thing I'm gonna do is add my microphone. Now this is a microphone that I've been wanting to talk about for a while because it's actually pretty sweet and it's got a lot of cool features. This is the Godox VDS M2 microphone. And this mic has a bunch of features and it's the mic that I basically have been using for all of my work for the last few months. So one of the coolest features about this mic is that it actually has an auto on feature. Essentially, when you plug it into your camera and your camera's off, it'll stay off. But as soon as you turn your camera on, this mic will automatically turn on. So you never have to worry about forgetting to turn it on and not recording audio because this microphone will just do it for you. It's also got a low cut filter of 75 to 150 hertz. It's got a minus 20 dB pad, which is pretty cool if you're in a really loud environment. And it's got a safety track feature. So you can put the safety track feature on and it'll record one channel at a higher volume and one channel at a lower. So that's a really cool professional feature and it's got a stepless gain adjustment on the back. So this Godox VDSM2 mic is just chock full of features and it actually sounds really good too. You have noticed that I've done a couple of things to it. I'm using a small rig shock mount just because it's a lot more of a slimmer profile. The shock mount that comes with the Godox VDSM2 is this yellow Rycote shock mount. And this is great and you can adjust it here so you can move it back and forth. The problem is that when I have it on a rig like this, it doesn't leave much space for my fingers to get in. The same thing with this foam windscreen. I just got this generic foam windscreen that I've had for different mics and put it on and it's just a little bit smaller than the Godox one. So I've just modified it a little bit so that it works works better with my rig. So I'm gonna attach it to the right hand side here where this little cold shoe is. So now we have a microphone, map box, lens, and this is typically how I would run with this camera. I feel like for the majority of shoots that I would go on, this would work perfectly, but there are some things in the EM1 Mark II that are kind of lacking when it comes to features. Now I know that there aren't a lot of content style cameras like this that are gonna give you pro features like false color. And so that's why I have integrated this small little monitor in with my rig. Now this is a monitor that's not really sold anymore. This is the ICANN VL35. It's a 3.5 inch little tiny monitor. So this will keep my whole small cinema rig actually nice and small. And the way that I attach it is I have this small rig kind of ball joint mount. Then if you remember the cold shoe on the front of my rig, basically I have a little external monitor for my rig. So you're not gonna have an HDMI cable kind of sticking out of the side here, which is one of my biggest pet peeves with camera rigs. So you can actually just plug it into the back and this right angle HDMI cable just really helps keep the entire rig nice and streamlined and slim. And that's basically all I have to do. Now you'll notice that I didn't attach rails. I didn't do a V-mount battery. The reason being is because this Olympus EM1 Mark II has great battery life and I don't really need to add something that's so big and cumbersome to a problem that doesn't really need to be solved. So when I'm out shooting stuff, I can just have this really nice, nimble and efficient camera rig. So yeah, that's how I rig out my EM1 Mark II into this little cinematic beast. And again, this rig is very functional but it's also very ergonomic, which was the biggest thing for me. So I actually put together a little playlist right here that you can check out, and it has some other videos of rig builds that I've done in the past. But other than that, I think that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Again, big thanks to Film Convert for sponsoring this video. And until next time, I'll catch y'all later. Bye.